Welcome to Hatha Yoga. My name is Michelle Chua. Please grab a couple of blocks, a strap, and a blanket for this practice. And let's start by folding your blanket and making it as thick of a fold where you can sit towards the front edge of it, elevating your pelvis higher than your knees as you turn out your thighs in front of you, sitting in some form of cross-legged if that is appropriate for your body right now. Coming into Sukhasana, see if you might be able to cross each shin at the middle of the shin. This starts to open up the hips. In our live community today, we have a request for outer hip opening postures, um, triceps, shoulders. We just finished practicing our 108 sun salutations on January 1st. Happy New Year, by the way, as well as hamstrings. So we're going to be holding some postures, not necessarily yin and restorative postures, but even active postures for a few more breaths today. I'd love to share this excerpt from the book by Donna Farhi, Teaching Yoga, where she actually gives a wonderful summary of the eight limbs of yoga. As you know, as some of you know, we try to incorporate much of the eight limbs of yoga in our yoga classes. Yoga is a centuries old spiritual tradition, science and art that proceeds from the knowledge that all life is interconnected. When we perceive ourselves to be cut off alone or separate from life, we suffer. As a consequence of our false perception, our actions in the world may be ignorantly misguided, causing unnecessary pain to ourselves. Yoga tells us that we can disentangle ourselves from this morass of suffering and also prevent suffering for others by recognizing that there is no one and no thing that is separate from us. We achieve this unitive state not through blind faith or mechanical observance of rituals, but through a no-nonsense practice of the eight limbs of yoga, which stems from Ashtanga yoga. The eight limbs consist of moral codes for living ethically, the yamas and niyamas, somatic practices, asana, that bring us into the truth of our embodiment, and breath awareness practices, pranayama, designed to resynchronize our individual rhythm with a primordial rhythm of the universe. Through consistent practice over a lifetime, we learn to recognize what is really important and to let go of impermanent objects and transient thoughts and emotions, pratyahara. Through this recognition of what really matters, we learn to concentrate our mind and life, dharana, on those things that are of lasting value. With practice, we learn to maintain our equanimity in the most difficult of circumstances, dhyana, and thereby liberate ourselves to reach our highest potential, samadhi, the eighth limb. As wonderful as all this may sound, yoga is not a spiritual tradition suited to theorists or those who are inclined to reclining positions only. Yoga is for those who have discipline, tenacity, and devotion. It is a pragmatic science where everything is tested and verified through direct experience. So let's begin. Please close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. Let your body be still. Recognize whatever sensations you're experiencing right now throughout your physical body. Sensing your physical state as a whole. Bring awareness to the natural rhythm of your breath. Noticing any qualities you're experiencing in the breath. Tuning into your energetic state. Now bring your attention to your mind. Notice the activity and kinds of thoughts in your mind.
sense any emotions you're feeling right now. So you can recognize your mental and emotional state at this moment. Now let's stoke the energy of the heart center, maybe placing your hands at the middle of your chest as you allow a moment to appreciate anything that comes to mind first. Letting in a slower breath through your nose, let your heart space widen and rise. Keeping it lifted, relax the body and exhale slowly through your mouth. And just like that, continue to deepen your breath. Now call to mind one thing you would like to cultivate through this practice, or maybe a quality through which you'd like to experience this practice, like a lens of perspective. Gratitude, peacefulness, clarity, courage. Setting your sankalpa or intention As you continue to deepen your breath, now call to mind someone or something that you care about to dedicate today's practice to. This is a means of non-attaching to any particular outcome and offering up our efforts beyond our individual selves. Let's seal our intentions together and cultivate resonance as we share practice in community by chanting OM three times. Inhale a little bit deeper. to acknowledge the wisdom of your body and the intelligence within. Listening to that and taking the practice at your pace, at the intensity level that is honoring your body and intention. Let's begin to deepen the breath with the lips closed if that's available to you. We'll begin the pranayama called Ujjayi Pranayama, victorious breathing, stoking your inner fire, through slow, steady, and even breaths through the nose, creating a very soft whispering sound by gently narrowing or constricting the back of your throat. Tune into the sound as a way to steady your mind. This is a practice of dharana, concentrating, so that the movements and the postures as you link them to the breath become a way of meditating itself. So as you tune into that rhythm, try to keep it going through much of this physical practice. And let's make our way onto hands and knees, preparing to start moving the spine in cat-cow pose. So as you're coming down into tabletop position, set your palms face down with your index fingers pointing straight ahead or slightly turned out. Stack your shoulders above your wrists, but step your knees a couple inches behind your hips. And as you inhale, slowly glide your chest forward and coil it up, rolling the shoulders down in cow pose. As you exhale, slowly contract your abdomen, dropping your head round your back in cat pose. Again, inhale, lifting your chest forward and rolling your shoulders down. Exhale, lifting your navel tucking your tailbone under and dropping your crown. Take another three to five cycles of cat-cow pose or in Sanskrit, it's called bitalasana. 
slowly synchronizing your moving to your breathing. At the end of your next exhalation, tuck your toes and lift your hips high, press the sitting bones back, entering downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Take a few breaths once you're there to slowly pedal your feet in place. If you'd like to bring a stretch into your outer hips, while pedaling, you might swivel your hips left and right, like you're dancing the twist. Keep tuning in to that whispering sound of your own breath. Notice if it might help to relax your neck by softly shaking and nodding your head a few times while you press the ground away with your fingers spread, palms flat, and lift your shoulders and hips further back, cultivating the feeling of a flat back. Softening your jaw, if it helps, you might flutter your lips a few times to relax it. Now, please set your knees back onto the ground and take your two blocks. We're going to start to stretch our triceps and lats, targeting the shoulders. So place your blocks on their medium height like this, second level, across the top of your mat, touching each other. Extend your arms forward with your palms face down. Then externally rotate your upper arms by spinning your triceps, the outer sides of your upper arms towards the ground to spread your shoulder blades wider across your back ribs, as well as depress the shoulders down. Keep doing those two actions now. Bend your elbows and place them exactly shoulders distance apart on the blocks. Press your fingertips into each other then step your knees a couple inches behind your hips. Tuning into the breath, trace your thumbs down the back of your skull, down the back of your neck, as far back as you comfortably can while dropping your head freely. Make sure the elbows stay shoulders width. Spread the shoulder blades, press them down the back ribs, and slightly firm in your belly to help support lengthening your lower back as you draw your hips further back. Invite the breath to stretch into the sides of your rib cage and your outer armpits. Ease the breath down the sides of your torso towards your outer waist. Three more slow ujjayi breaths here. To lift up, contract your abdomen, lift your head, and now let's set the blocks on their tallest height in front of your mat, shoulders width apart. Then meet me standing at the top of your mat behind the blocks in mountain pose. Separate your feet hips width apart, parallel to each other, and join your hands in prayer in Padasana, taking a moment of gratitude again for allowing the space to connect your inner and outer being to yoga today. Bring back your intention and let's flow through our first series of sun salutations. Surya Namaskar B. Inhale deeply and sweep your arms forward. Roll your shoulders back and down and tilt your chest up. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hinge forward from your hips with a flat back, bending your knees if needed. Plant your fingertips either on the floor, beside your heels, or take the blocks there. Step the left knee behind you, inhaling to a kneeling lunge. Hold your breath and step into plank pose with knees on the floor or legs straight. Exhale, lower your knees, then your chest and your chin. 
Inhale, slide to the ground and coil your chest just gently off the ground in Cobra, Bhujangasana. Exhale, lift your hips into Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, step your left foot beside your left thumb. Lower your right knee and gaze up. Exhale, step your right foot forward and bow. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead, coiling your chest up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, join your palms to meet at your heart center. One more time. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, bow, Uttanasana. Lower your fingertips. Inhale, step your right knee back. Look up. Hold your breath and step to plank. Exhale, lower your knees. Chest and chin in Ashtangasana. Inhale, slide through into Cobra. Exhale, lift your hips, downward dog. Inhale, step your right foot beside your right thumb. Lower your left knee, gaze up. Exhale, step your left foot forward and bow. Inhale, your arms overhead in Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, your hands together, Padasana. Second series, Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. This time, press into your blocks or the floor. Inhale, stretch your spine forward in Ardha Uttanasana. Step into plank pose, and this time, as you exhale, glide forward. Bend your elbows back to hug your side ribs in Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale to Cobra or Upward Facing Dog. Exhale to Downward Facing Duck. Let your body be still for three slow breaths. Steadying your eyes on one focal point. Steadying your drishti or gaze. Integrating the practice of dharana, concentrate, concentration. Finishing your third exhalation on empty, walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat. Inhale, press with your fingertips and lengthen to Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold to Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up to Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands together to Padasana. Let's take that sequence one more time. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Step into plank pose or lightly float into Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale to Cobra or Upward Facing Dog. Exhale to Downward Facing Dog. Again, let's pause, steady the gaze, taking three deep breaths, slowing down your breathing. When you finish the third breath, Walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat. Inhale to Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale to Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale to Padasana. Entering our third series of sun salutations is Surya Namaskar B. So bring the inner edges of your big toes to touch to prepare for chair pose. Empty this breath. As you inhale, bend your knees together to touch. Maybe graze the floor with your fingertips sitting that low, then raise your arms in chair, Utkatasana. Exhale, shift your weight forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Step to plank or float to Chaturanga. Take it through your vinyasa. From downward dog, keep your hips even in height as you inhale, raise the right leg back. Exhale, gently step your right foot forward beside your right thumb. Lower your left heel 
Inhale, rise to stand in warrior one. Exhale, lower into your vinyasa. From downward dog, inhale, raise your left leg behind you. Exhale, softly step the foot beside your left thumb and drop your right heel. Inhale, rise to Virabhadrasana one. Exhale into your vinyasa. Let's pause again for three breaths in downward dog, steadying your focus as you re-steady your breath. After the third, walk or float to the top. With feet touching, inhale Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale Uttanasana. With knees touching, inhale sit low in Utkatasana, chair pose. Stay in chair. We're going to start to open the outer hips. Rotate your right thigh externally at the hip. Turn it out. And as you flex your right foot, cross the right ankle over your left thigh, draw your sitting bones further back and maybe lower. Steadying your gaze on one thing that's just ahead of you. You might join your hands in prayer, firming in the belly. You might place your fingertips on your blocks if that feels okay on your right outer hip. Try to send your left shin bone back so that your left knee is stacked just above your left heel, rather than hovering in front of the heel. Let's listen to three more breaths in this figure four shaped chair pose, which is a preparation for flying single pigeon pose. Joining your hands at your heart, press down to your left foot, breathe in, Exhale, rise up to stand. Mountain pose. Take a deep breath. Clear it out. Shift your weight onto your right foot. As you sit into chair, turn out the left thigh at the hip. Flex your left foot and cross the ankle on top of your right thigh. Then try to evenly sink your sitting bones back. Stack your right knee above your right heel. Firm your abdomen. You might choose to lift your arms overhead, join your hands in prayer, or place your fingertips on your blocks. Steadying your eyes, your gaze, let's listen to three more even breaths. Joining your hands at your heart. Inhale, root down to your right foot. Exhale, rise up and stand tall in mountain pose. Again, full breath here. Now please turn to face the wide width of your mat and bring your two blocks as you step or jump your feet about as wide apart as you can spread the hands apart. Placing a block on the tallest height behind each calf. Now, I'm not going to mirror you here, so listen carefully. From your right hip, rotate your right leg externally, turn it out 90 degrees to face the short edge of your mat. From your left hip, turn in the left leg 45 degrees, aligning your right heel to intersect the arch of your left foot. Keep your shoulders right above your hips, opening the arms so your chest is completely facing the wide width of your mat. Look over your right shoulder and bend your right knee directly above your right heel. Press the outside edge of your left foot firmly into the earth. Without moving your feet isometrically, drag your feet towards each other as you might sink your hips a little lower, lifting your pelvic floor. How is your breath? 
as we stay here, refining warrior two, keep tuning into your breathing. Rotate your right outer hip underneath your body enough so that the center of your right kneecap points towards your right pinky toe. At the same time, firm the top of your left thigh bone back, stacking your shoulders over your hips, lengthen through the center of your spine and widen across the arms, fingers all touching in each hand. Vira Bhadrasana two. Let's tune into three to four last breaths, steadying your eyes just past your right hand. Straightening your right leg, let's prepare for triangle pose. Slide your pelvis sideways towards your left heel and reach your right arm horizontally past your right knee. Place your right hand just to the right side of your right shin on a block of the floor right up against your right leg. Raising your left arm, stack your shoulders and wrists in one line. Now, keep isometrically dragging your feet towards each other. Keep wrapping your right outer hip underneath your body as if you're directing your right sitting bone towards your inner left heel. Lengthen the crown of your head forward, pressing your shoulder blades down your back ribs. Spinning your chest slightly to face the sky, steady your gaze on one spot. Trikonasana. Let's stay another three to four breaths. You might know that warrior two and triangle pose are both hip opening postures. Now let's take triangle pose into a standing balancing pose called half moon. Stay in the shape, but gaze at the ground just ahead of your right foot, keeping your breath steady. You might find it helpful to place the left hand on your left hip. Bend your right knee and place your block or right fingertips about six inches in front of your right pinky toe and out to the right corner. Keep your right foot exactly where it is and drag your left foot forward. Flex your left foot and press away the inner heel as you lift your left leg. Turn your chest again to face the wide width of your mat as you are facing in triangle pose and tack the crease of your right hip back towards your lifted left heel. Maybe raise your left arm up in Ardha Chandrasana. Again, steady your gaze. Listen to your breath. And let's cultivate stillness and focus with ease for another three to four breaths here. When you're ready, leave the block where it is and bend your right knee to softly step back into warrior two. With your feet wide apart, straighten both legs and parallel your feet towards the wide width of your mat. Starting in neutral, let's enter the second side. From your left hip, turn out the left leg 90 degrees Turn in the right leg 45 degrees. Align your left heel to intersect the arch of your right foot. Keep your shoulders right above your hips and open your arms. Gaze past your left shoulder and bend your left knee directly on top of your left heel while pressing the outside edge of your right foot more deeply into the floor. Imagine you're dragging your feet towards each other without visible movement listening to your breath, steady your eyes just past your left hand. Let's continue to fine tune warrior two. Staying where you are, rotate your left outer hip under your body 
directing the center of your left kneecap towards your left pinky toe while you press the top of your right thigh bone back. Spread wide across your arms, lengthen through the spine. Tuning in to three to four more deep breaths in Virabhadrasana two. Straighten your left leg. Let's prepare for triangle pose. Glide your hips sideways towards your right heel. Extend your left arm forward past your left knee and place it on the left side of your left shin on a block of the floor, right up against your left leg. As you raise your right arm, rotate your chest slightly to face the sky and tack the crease of your left hip back towards your right heel while lengthening your spine forward, sending the shoulder blades down your back. Pausing here, listen to the quality of your breathing for three to five more breaths in Trikonasana. Now staying in the pose, look down just in front of your left foot. Bend your left knee, maybe place the right hand on your right hip to help you balance as you transition to half moon. Walk your left hand about six inches ahead of your left pinky toe out to the left corner. Drag your right foot forward, keeping the left leg where it is. Raise the right foot and flex it. Turn your chest to the right. If your balance feels pretty stable and the breath is flowing fluidly, consider raising your right arm maybe looking up. Ardha Chandrasana. Continue to expand and engage the muscles in your legs, just like you did in triangle pose. We'll be here for another three to five breaths. When you're ready, bend your left knee and very slowly step back into warrior two. Inhale in warrior two. Exhale, cartwheel your hands to the floor. Let's meet in downward facing dog. In downward dog, keep your hips leveled in height and inhale, raise your right leg behind you. As you exhale, bend your right knee high towards your nose and round forward into plank before stepping the foot beside your right thumb and lowering your left knee. Inhale, rise into a kneeling lunge, Anjaneyasana. So make sure that your legs are as wide apart as your hips and your right knee is directly above your right heel isometrically scissoring your legs to create a sense of stability as you lift your pelvic floor and lift the spine even taller. Using the right hand to cup the top of your right thigh, firm your right leg still as we prepare to twist. Raise your left arm up, breathe in and stretch your spine forward, tracing the midline of your mat. Without turning your pelvis, exhale, turn your chest to face the right wall and lower your left hand on a block of the floor directly beneath your left shoulder. Raise the right arm up and you're in the first version of the twist. Another variation to go further if your balance feels stable enough. Hook the left elbow outside your right thigh. Either join your hands in prayer, turning the chest to bring the center of it to eventually meet your thumbs or open your arms apart. Make sure your right leg stays still. That right knee continues to trace towards the middle toe. Another option is to lift the back knee so that you're in a high lunge. Be mindful not to twist at your pelvis. Keep your hips leveled 
to secure your lower back. Each inhale, lengthen through the center line of your body. Each exhale, firm your hips in still and continue to rotate your rib cage, twisting at your waist. Let's listen to another three to four breaths in twisting side angle pose variation or Parita Parjvakanasana. Now stay in your twist, gaze down at your right foot. Lower your left knee if it's lifted and place your two hands on your two blocks. With your left hip directly above your left knee, lift the ball of your right foot and flex the foot, pressing the big toe mound forward. Plug your right thigh bone back deeper into your hip socket as you straighten your right leg, flexing the front muscle of your right thigh Lift your chest and lengthen your spine forward as you breathe in. Firm in the belly and exhale to hinge just a little bit each breath out from the hips into a forward fold called half split or in Sanskrit, Ardha Hanumanasana. So you might feel already that this helps to open into your right hamstring. You might even feel it in the glute. Find the depth to fold forward that allows you to continue to breathe ujjayi peacefully and to slightly lift your chest so you're not closing off your throat as well as lengthen all the sides of your neck, pressing the shoulder blades back while reaching the top of your head forward. About three more breaths here. Now begin to drag your right heel back, stepping into downward facing dog again. Inhale, long exhale all through the nose. Keep your hips balanced and inhale, raise your left leg behind you. Bending the knee high towards your nose, exhale, round into plank and softly step your foot beside your left thumb. Lower your right knee into a kneeling lunge. Inhale to rise, Anjaneyasana. Separating your legs hips width apart, stack your left knee right above your left heel and isometrically scissor your legs. Cup the top of your left thigh with your left hand and inhale, lengthen your spine forward. At your waistline, exhale, twist to the left. Start by placing your right hand on a block of the floor right beneath your right shoulder, raising the left arm to stack your shoulders and wrists. Then you might decide to go further if your balance feels stable and the breath is still fluid. Crossing the right elbow outside your left thigh, either join your hands in prayer slowly continuing to turn the chest or open your arms apart without buckling in the left knee. Whatever version you might choose to lift the back knee if you did so on the first side. Try to go for symmetry, the same variation of the pose as you practiced on side one. Inhale, lengthen through the center line of your body. Exhale, firm your hips still and continue to twist, relaxing your shoulders down your back for three to four more breaths. Twisting side angle pose variation. Parita Parjvakanasana. Stay in your twist and gaze down at your left foot. Lower your hands on two blocks, framing it. Set your right knee down directly under your right hip and lift the ball of your left foot flexed. Plug the left thigh bone back. As you straighten the left leg, press the big toe mound of the foot forward. Lifting your chest, breathe in and stretch your spine forward. 
breathe out, hinge just a little bit of your range from your hips. Little by little, folding into half split or Ardha Hanumanasana. Remember to flex the front muscle of your left thigh, your quadricep. It's the feeling as if you're lifting your left kneecap without locking the knee. This supports stretching your left hamstring safely. Last three breaths here. This time, bend your left knee and let's exit the pose by sliding your right foot forward. We're gonna come on down to our back, so take a block and set it aside near the back edge of your mat. Bring a strap and place it there too. Come on down to your back and separate your feet on the floor wider than your hips distance apart. Separate your knees as wide apart as your feet are and keep your feet on the floor while dropping both knees to the right. Adjust your left leg so your left knee points down the midline of your mat. Now observe any sensations around the left side of your pelvis from the front of the hip to the lower back. If you're not sensing much happening then add crossing your right ankle just above your left knee. You might also choose to raise your arms overhead and hold opposite elbows, dropping your arms back as you relax the shoulders down. Lots of things happening in this posture, as you might already sense. Definitely it targets your psoas muscle which crisscrosses across your lower back and into the fronts of your hips so deep that they're behind your digestive organs they contract when our stress response is triggered let's finish another four to seven deep breaths here So part of the areas we're opening in this posture is your left outer hip. Notice anything going on there right now. And when the psoas muscle is tight, when it's very tight or chronically tense, you might experience chronically short breaths or shallow breaths, not able to take deep, full breaths. So this posture also affects your ability to take deeper breaths. Now let's gently begin to return to that neutral starting position. Relax the arms, set your feet on the mat, wider than hips distance, separate the knees as wide apart as your feet. Then keep your feet on the ground and drop your knees both to the left. Adjust your right leg if needed so that you're pointing the right knee down the center line of your mat. Pause and observe anything you're feeling around the right side of your pelvis, front of the hip to the right side of the lower back. Stay here if there's plenty happening. Otherwise, cross the left ankle above your right knee. Raise your arms overhead and now take the non-default arm and place it on top as you hold opposite elbows. Invite longer inhalations. Find more ease as you exhale completely. Really feel the bottom of the breath when you've 
emptied any last bit of air from your lungs really cleansing your lungs by taking the time to feel both ends of each breath. Last two or three breaths here. Uncrossing your legs, please set your feet on the ground, this time hips distance apart and parallel them to each other. Take a block by the skinniest width and you might have to adjust the spacing of your legs. Hug that skinny block firmly between your knees and thighs. Bring your arms down by your sides and slide your heels back until you could almost touch them with your fingertips, but not quite. Ground your feet, ground your shoulders and tilt your chin slightly back. Breathing in, lift your hips and stretch the front of your thighs forward. Isometrically drag your heels back towards your glutes while lifting your chest. Continue another five to 10 slow breaths before you exhale while lowering your spine slowly to the ground. While here, walk your upper arms closer together under your back ribs. Keep your arms straight, and if your hands meet to touch, consider interlacing your fingers. Press down with the outsides of your upper arms and lift up to your heart space. Another great posture to expand the lungs and really dive deep into the breath. Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, Bridge Pose. often known as a heart opening, shoulder stretching, front of the body, hips and thighs, opening posture. Lots happening here. We're going to practice this one more time after you lower and rest for three breaths. Keep hugging the block. Just relax for three breaths. Notice how your body is feeling here. And when you're ready, lift up for another round of five to 10 breaths in bridge pose. When you've completely lowered, set the block aside. Turn over to one side or rock yourself up to sit. Let's prepare for a seated twist, extending your left leg forward and stepping your right foot on the floor, either in front of your right hip or crossed outside of your left knee. Maybe you bend the left knee too. Just make sure you're able to root both sitting bones evenly into the ground and sit tall and relaxed. Place the right hand behind your pelvis and raise your left arm. Press down into the floor and breathe in to lift to your crown. 
Exhale, begin to twist to the right side and lower your left arm, holding your right shin or hooking your elbow outside of that thigh. Keep going, inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, soften your belly to allow the twist to deepen. On the next exhale, and wind your spine, but crisscross your thighs even more, preparing for Gomukhasana. So either stack your knees and splay your feet apart, or if that throws you off balance, straighten the bottom leg forward and flex the bottom foot. So we were gonna practice the arm version of this pose, but instead to counter the back bend and to stretch more in the area of the outer shoulders. Let's take the arms in eagle pose. So bend your elbows apart and cross your left elbow over the right elbow and either wrap your forearms and palms or press the backs of the hands against each other. Draw your shoulder blades down, press the hips down and lift up from the bottom of your spine to the back of your skull. Breathe in. Exhale, hinge forward just a little bit at a time. Breath by breath, lengthen and ground. Fold as you exhale. Two more breaths. As you press your hips down, inhale to slowly rise. Release your arms, straighten your legs. Let's prepare to twist on the second side. Stepping your left foot on the floor, that up like you did on the first side. Foot in front of the hip or crossed outside the knee, maybe bend the right knee. Left hand behind your pelvis, right arm towards the sky. Sit tall as you ground, breathe in. Exhale, begin to twist to your left. Lower your right arm, maybe hook your elbow. Inhale, root down to rise up. Exhale, soften your belly to allow the twist. Two more breaths here. As you empty the breath, unwind your spine, then hug your thighs closer together for Gomukhasana, cow face pose in the legs. Remember, you can straighten the bottom leg if that's helpful. Bend your elbows apart and cross your right elbow over the left. Press the shoulders and hips down and sit taller as you breathe in. Exhale, begin to fold from your hips. One to two more deep breaths. Press down with your pelvis and inhale, rise up. Release your arms and straighten your legs for Paschimottanasana. Now you might place the strap around the balls of your feet so that you're able to relax the shoulders rather than round the back. Or if you can relax the shoulders and keep a flat back, you might eventually use your peace fingers to clasp your big toes. So root your sitting bones down and flex your feet. Inhale, lengthen your spine up. <sighs> Hug in the belly and exhale, begin to hinge forward from your hips. Taking your time for another five to seven breaths.
When you're ready, press down to your hips and inhale, slowly rise up. Please find a comfortable way to sit and we'll practice the fourth limb of yoga, pranayama, particularly a breathing technique to help calm your nervous system even more. Prepare for meditation by helping to tune inward and really connect with your subtle energy body. This is called alternate nostril breathing or nodi shodhana pranayama. So as you sit tall, relaxed, rest your left hand on your lap. You might bring the thumb and first finger to touch with a palm face down to ground or the palm face up to cultivate connection to higher consciousness. With your right hand, stick out your thumb, pinky and ring finger, Vishnu Mudra. Continue to close your lips as you breathe very slowly and gently through your nose. We'll use the right thumb to close your right nostril and the right ring and pinky to close your left nostril when we alternate nostrils to breathe. Let's practice three cycles together, then two cycles on your own. You might like to close your eyes, empty this breath to prepare. Hold it out. Right thumb, close right nostril, inhale left. Hold. Close left, exhale right. Hold. Inhale right. Hold. Close right, exhale left. Hold. Inhale left, second round, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold three, two, one. Close left, exhale right, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold three, two, one. One, inhale right, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold three, two, one, close right, exhale left, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold three, two, one, third cycle, inhale left for six, hold three, Close left, exhale right, six. Hold three. Inhale right, six. Hold three. Close right, exhale left for six. Hold three. Continue two more cycles. When you finish, rest both hands on your lap, breathe naturally, and observe your experience.
then begin to lower your body slowly to the ground, lying down for a few minutes of rest in stillness, your corpse pose, Shavasana. You might like to place a block, I mean a blanket over your body. Let your body rest here a little longer. And as you keep your eyes closed, pay attention to anything you sense about your body right now. Notice your physical state. Then very gently and gradually Begin to move small parts of your body first, like wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes, then ease into a simple stretch. Maybe still keeping your eyes closed. Take your time turning over onto your right side, resting your head on your arm. 
And as you arrive there, notice the qualities of your natural breath. Sensing your energetic state now. Then slowly press your hands into the ground and lift your body up, finding a comfortable way to sit for five minutes of meditation. You may like to sit on your folded blanket. Any way that allows you to feel balanced in your hips, rooting down, your spine is tall, and your body is relaxed. Place your hands in a mudra, which helps to cultivate feeling tones, stacking the palms face up on your lap with your thumb tips touching is a mudra to cultivate equanimity or inner balance. Then either close your eyes or steady a soft gaze on one spot. Let's begin the meditation by locating the place in your body in which you can most easily feel the natural breath. Now rest your awareness there. as you easefully focus on the breath. Let all other sounds fade into the distant background. If your attention goes after thoughts, notice and let go. Come back to the breath.
Notice how you feel now, mentally and emotionally. This is the practice of the seventh limb of the eight limbs of yoga called dhyana meditation. You might touch your heart center or join your hands in prayer that as you bow in and take a moment to appreciate yourself for showing up to your practice today. To appreciate anything that you feel gratitude for. then remember what your intention was at the beginning of this practice. Reconnect to that. Remember to whom or what you dedicated today's practice to. And let's prepare to close by chanting Om three times Inhale. Boom. Recognize the light within you. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.